Good afternoon, Glenn. Good Welcome afternoon. to India. Uh, good to be here. Yeah, I al you always enjoy being in India. You've said that uh, multiple times before. So what brings you to the country this time? Yeah, well, I've been here for nearly two and a half weeks now. So okay. I, I spent six weeks a year in uh, Chennai, mm -hmm. uh, two lots of, uh, three lots of two weeks doing some work with MRF Pace Foundation coaching. And then uh, I've been doing uh, last few days and we've got uh, a few days coming up. Uh, I'm a brand ambassador for Hardy's Wines, mm -hmm. uh, iconic wine brand back home in Australia. Okay. Uh, they've been over here for 10 years and we're just building the brand and, and bringing over two new wines, okay. uh, which you see beside me here in our William Hardy uh, range, mm -hmm. a nice Shiraz and a nice Chardonnay. So from the cooler climates down around uh, below South Australia, mm -hmm. uh, below Adelaide in South Australia. So uh, some, a couple of very nice wines there. Okay, so that, that's what's brought you to uh, India this time. Yeah, we're, so we're on, launching them. Okay, so. on that note, uh, you know, uh, there seems to be some sort of connect over the years between former Australian cricketers and yeah. India, you know, starting yeah. with Steve Waugh, Ricky Ponting is a coach in the IPL, and, you know, Brett Lee is a Bollywood star now. So, uh, what what is this connect that, you know, is there something to this, Australian cricketers and India? Well, I think cricket and India is uh, is the common theme there. It's, uh, you know, there's no other country in the world that has the same passion and, and love for the game of cricket. So, yeah, the opportunities to come over here and, and give a little back to the game, whether it's coaching or commentating or or even still playing in the IPL. So I'm over here doing a little bit of coaching. Obviously, uh, uh, a few people know who I am as well, so I can uh, come over yeah. at, in doing the role that I'm now for brand ambassador for Hardy. So it's, I think uh, that's a little bit of an enjoy. understatement there. You know, few people know who you are. You are <laughs> arguably the greatest fast bowler of our times. So yeah, it's, uh, well, it's a tough thing to be a fast bowler in India, and you know, I like to think people like seeing fast bowlers running in, bowling quick. Uh, seeing stumps flying, batsmen jumping around. So, no, I've enjoyed it. It's it's been a, a learning experience for me the last four years. Um, coaching was something I, I didn't think I wanted to get into, and now I've got into it. I'm really enjoying it. I've learned a lot. Probably more about the technical side of things, and hopefully passing on some uh, some helpful things that'll help the young bowler through his uh, through his career. So, uh, some good young quality uh, uh, young fast bowlers coming through, and I think he is in good hands. Yeah, look into the future. Yeah, I mean, they can't have uh, asked for a better uh, guiding hand than you, uh, so to speak. You know, uh, like we all know your uh, exploits with the red and white ball is you know, quite unparalleled. So, uh, you've seen a few uh, up-and-coming Indian bowlers now. And you would have seen most of the up-and-coming Australian bowlers. Mm. Uh, what, where do you think India is uh, lacking, if any, anywhere? You know, uh, why are we not able to provide the same quality fast bowlers that you know Australia have? over the years, you know, on a consistent basis, been able to produce? Um, oh, there's still been a lot of quality fast bowlers here in India. Um, I think the conditions are one of the biggest differences. Uh, in Australia, the wickets are a bit quicker, bouncier. Mm -hmm. For the bowlers, you get a bit more out of it. Over here in India, you know, they can be a bit slower, a little bit lower for the fast bowlers running in bowling all day. It's hard work, and it's probably as hard as anywhere in the world to be a fast bowler here, and then to sustain that day in, day out on... Uh, uh, wickets that aren't that helpful yeah. is hard work, but yeah. you know there's still some quality fast bowlers going around. There has been in the past, so and that hopefully there always will be. And the the whole idea of the MRF was to hopefully one day find that express bowler sure. and and bring him through the system. Sure. So yeah. Yeah, we're going okay. And Who, we've who's, got some... who's the one who's caught your eye in terms of the current Indian crop of fast bowlers? Yeah, well, quite a few have come through the MRF Pace Foundation and gone on to play for India. Mm -hmm. uh, Vrune Aaron's probably the guy that's uh, there at the there or thereabouts at the at the minute. A um, couple of guys that are close in Natu Singh and uh, Ankit Rajput. Mm -hmm. uh, Natu Singh a... did get a good uh, mm. deal in the IPL last year. Yeah, we so... didn't see him much, but you know, he's supposed to be one of the promising. Yeah, so he's promising. He's uh, a bit of a natural, mm -hmm. uh, and then. Two other ones, which are sort of uh, you know promising. I think they've got huge potential in uh, okay. Anakit Chowdhury and and V Pratap Singh. Okay. So, you know, there's guys there that uh, I think have a big future in front of them. Mm -hmm. Now it's up to them if they get the opportunity. True. They've got to grab it and they've got to keep working. True, home. true. Uh, just a few questions. We are already getting quite a few on uh, Facebook. <laughs> um, Premankur Biswas is asking, do you think uh, Saro Ganguly was more Australian than most of the Australian players? Um, interesting question. I'm not sure uh, where that comes from. I didn't think Saurabh was uh, Australian in any way. He's okay. very much Indian. Okay. Um, yeah, love I'm guessing in terms country. of the attitude that Saurabh um, really brought to the Indian cricket, you know, he's yeah. seen as the guy who we always were, you know, Indian cricket was 
Indian cricketers were not supposed yeah. to be great travelers. You know, that was something that sort of yeah. bought into the team and changed it along. So that I'm, I'm guessing that's where the question is oh, coming from. I'm thinking from. there or whether he had, you know, he had fairly aggressive attitude exactly. like, to, to exactly. give a bit back as well. Yeah. Probably a little bit uh, like Brett Coley yeah, these days, yeah. who's uh, uh, has a, uh, yeah, quite an aggressive uh, attitude, gets out there and, and gives it everything he's got. So, yeah, some good battles with Saurav. Mm -hmm. um, that know, was he, one of the greatest rivalries in recent times in terms of test mm -hmm. cricket. The Indian teams of the two, early yeah. two thousands and the great Australian team of the same era. Yeah. You know, we saw some great Test matches in India, in Australia. Yeah, that must have been one great. Uh, you know, that was one of the. For a while, I think it was even you know more looked forward to than Ashes. Would you say? Um, yes and no. I think for an Australian, it's always the Ashes is mm -hmm. is the ultimate. Not so much because. Um, yeah, that's who we love playing. It's yeah. There's nothing worse than getting beaten by England. So <laughs> if we get beaten by India, yeah, we can we can live with that to a degree. But yeah, some great battles over the time. Mm -hmm. uh, we probably always had the wood over over them in Australia. Mm -hmm. and yeah. They nearly had it over us here in I mm -hmm. India. Two thousand four was the first time the Australian team had won in India the a series for a here. long, long time. Yes. And every time I come here, uh, everyone. Wants Pretty to sure bring that up word, the, yeah, that yeah. word was, you know, final frontier was thrown at uh, yeah. all the press conferences. That was that 2001 series. Everyone keeps bringing up a certain mm -hmm. test match there at uh, Eden Gardens where uh, TVS <laughs> Lachman, Roald Dravid batted all day. So, yeah, yeah some, some great memories there and some good battles. Mm -hmm. And uh, on that note, uh, you know, uh, is that... Uh, in that period of time, you know, you had teams that travelled well for your Australian side, for example, and Indian mm. the Indian side under Saurav Ganguly. You don't see that much nowadays, do you? Uh, in Test cricket especially, it's become so dominant. The home sides are dominating almost every series. What, where do you think that uh, change happened? You know, what, what do you see is the reason for that? Yeah, now it's a little bit disappointing that that's happening. Um, I think one of the biggest uh, things I've seen, just if I look at Australian cricket, is when I first started playing, um, every wicket in Australia had a different character. You know, Sydney was a turning wicket, uh, Perth was quick and bouncy, mm -hmm. um, Brisbane, the Gabba had a bit of grass on it, would carry through, good wicket, Adelaide, good wicket, but day four and five would go up and down, so you had to learn to bat, bowl in all different conditions, mm -hmm. it wasn't just a one type of wicket, whereas now in Australia all the wickets are very similar, okay. they're very good batting tracks, so you get to learn to play in one condition and you don't uh, adapt as well or as quickly as okay. probably we did in the past. So that's my biggest issue, and I think that's one of the reasons why teams don't travel well, mm -hmm. is because the wickets in their home country now are so similar, they get used to playing one Homo sort of style. Homogeneous wickets, you know. There's yeah, no a little bit uh, too much, unfortunately. Okay. So, yeah, I'd like to see that change uh, okay. and, and teams sort of travel better and be more competitive. That, that uh, was one of the forward. questions, in fact, uh, one of our Twitter users had, mm -hmm. Anish Anand, uh, wanted to know, you know, why is Australian teams struggling in Asia these days, example? Uh, you know, there's, I think they've lost their last 11 test matches mm -hmm. in Asia, if I remember right. Uh, is that kind of, you know, ties into what we've been talking? Yeah, but it's, uh, it, batting it, against spin has been a bit of a problem for most countries these yeah, days. Yeah, it is an issue, and especially for the Australians. Unfortunately, we, we've just, uh, they're in a, uh, Sri Lanka at the moment, and the test series there, I think Australia was supposed to go and dominate and win that, but again... You know, we found wanting a little bit for, for spin and ended up losing that series 3-0, which doesn't uh, fare too well for the upcoming series yeah. here in India early yeah. next year. So That's the boys have got a fair bit of work to do mm -hmm. uh, before they you know, be able to compete with India here. Um, my issue is you know, we don't seem to know how to handle spin as, as a, a batting team. Mm -hmm. uh, we either go really defensive and, and don't score at all, just look to survive, or we go get too aggressive and we look to attack. So... We need to come up with a plan, either as a team or as individuals, of how to handle that. Some, uh, Matthew Hayden yeah, was one was who, who yeah. really started to sweep well, mm -hmm. uh, and that's how he combated the spin here in the subcontinent and, and did exceptionally well. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, the guys will have to come up with something in the next uh, Matthew Hayden four or five stop months. Scoring. Mm -hmm. Couldn't stop scoring in that uh, period when he was, you know, sweeping everything. Yeah. Uh, so he was he was the most successful batsman in I think two series back to back. Yeah, in probably, India. probably because yeah. and he was quite an aggressive batsman yeah. too. Um, so yeah, w they need to do a lot of work between now and say March next year when and they're the back here Indian for the for the test because yeah. I can't see too many. Uh, green, bouncy, quick wickets being prepared for them here. Sure. Uh, another uh, question that we got on Twitter uh, from Manas Mithul. Uh, what do you make of, uh, this is slightly off topic uh, of what we are discussing about, what do you make of Mohamed Amir's return to Test Cricket? You know, a lot of people have had their opinion on it, uh, mm. whether he should be given a second chance or not. And yeah. you know, 
you saw him bowl at the lords and you know did, he did well i mean we know we all know is a great talented yeah. fast bowler but what what is your take on the second chance that was given to mohammad amir yeah no, it's interesting it uh, you know he's only a young guy when uh, when he got uh, you know suspended from the game mm-hmm. um, you know whatever the reasons for that why he did that um, you know i'm happy to give someone a, a second chance uh, if they do it a second time then you know uh, no more chances, but Two he's a he's a quality out. bowler. There's no doubt about that. Uh, like we said, he was only a young guy, uh, quite you know, probably influenced by the wrong people, and uh, and now he and he paid the price mm-hmm. uh, quite heavily. So now he's he's done his time. He's back. Uh, you know, he's he's bowling well. So I'm happy to to give him a, a, another chance okay. here. So but, you're uh, you're on the side that says you know the second chance is okay. Uh, to a degree, yeah. Okay. To a degree. Right. So you know, everyone's allowed to make a mistake as mm-hmm. long as. Uh, yeah, it doesn't happen again. Okay. Uh, another question that we got from uh, Cricking uh, is an app. Uh, what do you think of uh, India's uh, current pace attack, and how do you compare it to the ones that uh, once the sides that you faced uh, in your time? Yeah, no, it's uh, interesting looking at the Indian attack at the moment. I haven't uh, seen them bowl that much uh, recently, but obviously with Shami and uh, Ishan Sharma, who's been around for a long time. Um, Kum- uh, Kumar, who's you know he swings the ball in the right conditions and. You know, you've got young guys like uh, Jaspreet Boomer coming through. So there's a, a good mix there. They're not too similar. Uh, so I think in that respect, they should be able to handle most conditions. Uh, and then the young guys coming through, hopefully, will hold them in good stead moving forward. But there's enough experience there playing at that level uh, to be able to perform well. So okay. you know, at the end of the day, if, if there's uh, bowlers performing better than them, then they get the opportunity. If not, then they're the, it's they're the guys that uh, have yeah. to do the job. So, yeah, yeah they're, they're quality bowlers still. Okay. Uh, another question that we're getting from uh, Satyam Jha on Facebook. Who do you think of the current generation can fill Glenn McGrath's shoes? Uh, uh, for the Australian team greatest? or in just general? general? So in general, in general, in test cricket, you know? Yeah, no, it's a bit harsh <laughs> trying to find someone to do that. It's, uh, I think the young guys coming through their own, you know, their own people, their own bowlers, they have their own style. You look at someone like Josh Hazelwood, who... Uh, you know, people have compared to me. I think, you know, he's... Uh, the action he's, is a bit similar. Uh, he's tall, he's strong, he hits good areas, mm-hmm. he can build up uh, a bit of pressure. So, you know, he's been doing exceptionally well. So, you know, I enjoy watching Josh and I think he's got a great uh, career in front of him. Uh, you look at someone like Mitchell Stark, who I think is bowling exceptionally well. You know, he's swinging the ball, uh, bowling, bowling attacky, attacking line lengths uh, with the old ball, with the new ball, uh, doing exceptionally well. Uh, so there's some good bowlers around the world. Dale Steyn still quality. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the South African attack is is pretty amazing. And then you look at Stuart Broad, who's been doing, you know, who's been a I great bowler for a long time. Ask, you know, are you awarding English fast bowlers for a uh, reason? No, and, and Jimmy Anderson, <laughs> Jimmy when the ball's Anderson, swinging, yeah. he's yeah. as good as anyone going around. So there's still a lot of quality. He's the one, quality. you know, mathematically, he's the one closest to you in terms mm. of uh, the wickets in Test cricket, at least. So I'm pretty sure when you're talking about the greats of this generation, it's going to be mm. Jimmy Anderson and... Dale Stain, uh, but you know, yeah, that's a yeah. valid question, valid answer you gave. It's difficult to fill up, fill your shoes. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't come out and say that as uh, it's difficult to fill my I'm, shoes. I'm, I wouldn't, I, can say I wouldn't you. do that to another bowler. <laughs> I, can, to I can say, say that, that for you. Um, I have a lot of people who are talking about uh, Dhoni's retirement. I'm not sure if you want to tackle that question. Is it, do you have an opinion on when Dhoni So he's still playing T20? T20s and ODIs. And, and ODIs. So, yeah, he's retired from the longer version of the game, which is fair enough. Uh, and to focus on the on the shorter version. And, you know, he's uh, he's been a great captain for India for a long, long time. He's got the respect of not only his players, but all the players around the world. Mm-hmm. So, you know, and there's probably no better finisher within the shorter format than, than MS mm-hmm. or know the game as well as what he does. So yeah. he's still got a lot to offer the game. Unfortunately, the other day in the, that uh, big high-scoring match True. against uh, the West Indies in the US, mm-hmm. you know, needed two, two runs off no the last, last ball, ball and unfortunately yeah. <laughs> uh, couldn't do it. He's done it so many times in the past. In the past yeah. uh, but yeah, he's still got, I think, a lot to offer and you know, he's, he's a quality player. Uh, that dovetails nicely into the next question I was going to ask you. Uh, you saw the match uh, between India and West Indies, 489 runs scored in 40 overs. How did you feel as a fast I, bowler? I didn't see it, uh, uh, but, but I sort of had a look at it. And, 32, yeah, uh, 32 sixes were hit, you know, <laughs> I think 35 boundaries, yeah. 489 runs. Two, you make 245 and you lose yeah. by one run. Yeah. Uh, how did you feel as yeah, a fast it's been, bowler? It's uh, <laughs> been tough work for the bowlers, I think. It, uh, at first, I thought it must have been on a baseball ground, which was an interesting shape, tiny boundaries, but it's a proper cricket it's a field. Proper. I think yeah. 67 to 76 metres, so yeah. it's not yeah. huge. 
but the wicket must have been pretty flat. It was. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, with bats these days and uh, and the bowling, you know, restrictions. I yeah, I have to question the bowling to go for two hundred and forty five <laughs> off twenty overs. Whether they executed as well as they could have, but. No. Yeah, it, was a, it would is, have been is that game. something? Is that something that uh, you would change? For example, uh, we have had a few players who have spoken about the bat sizes, for example, and mm-hmm. the ground regulating the ground sizes. Uh, if if there's one thing that you would change in the shorter format of the uh, of the sport, what would that be? You know, would you look at bat sizes? For, for um, one? Well, you mentioned the size of grounds or roping grounds off a long way. I'm not a big fan of that. I think each ground should have its own character. Um, and fair enough, rope it off so that the guys don't go you know, full pelt into the fence and injure themselves. But keep the character of each ground. Like you look at Adelaide, very long straight, and they rope it in so far. It, it sort of, I think, ruins the, the character of that field. So I like to see the grounds pretty much the shape they are and not rope them up too much. I think they are looking into bats at the moment just mm-hmm. to see if the regulations are, are you know, fair enough or, or what's going to happen there. So at the end of the day... You know, the bowlers have to be better at executing their bowling Plans. plans. Mm-hmm. And if you can bowl the ball where you want to bowl it, then you can protect uh, certain parts of the field a bit better. But the new shots they're designing, and if the bats are as good as they say they are, mm-hmm. you know, the boundaries are too short. You, know, we have, you have 360 <laughs> cricketers these days. You yeah, know, big, exactly. Big everywhere. Uh, Akash Shiva Subramanian on Facebook has a question. How difficult is it to maintain uh, line and length? You know, that was something that you were known for. And uh, why do you think the fast bowlers of uh, the current generation are struggling? You know, if, if you think they are struggling. Mm. Yeah, some of them uh, struggle some days and others are pretty good. But it comes back to, uh, to knowing yourself, knowing your game. You know, you still have to practice and work hard. And, you know, something line length and, and getting the ball in the right area and getting that bounce was my, uh, I guess, my strength. That's how I looked at taking wickets. I never wanted to bowl the ball where the batsman wanted the ball to be. So... I um, so I focused hard, concentrated, and to me, I wanted my I guess my goal uh, was to play or bowl what I class the perfect game, where mm-hmm. every ball went where I wanted to bowl the ball, um, and as a bowler, that's all you can control is that's where you bowl the ball. Yeah. You can't control the shot mm-hmm. the batsman plays, or to a degree, if you get it in the right area. So that's what I focused on, and just uh, try to get as accurate and specific as possible, and you know it, it worked quite well. Okay. And uh, final question, maybe. Uh, thoughts on uh, Rabada? You think he's he the best young fast bowler coming up in world cricket? Yeah, no, I've been impressed with Rabada. He's, uh, you know, been doing a great job there for South Africa. You know, when you've got Dale Stain and uh, Mornay Morkel and uh, Philander there, he's got some uh, uh, very good bowlers, experienced bowlers to learn from. Uh, and yeah, I think he's uh, one of the one of the very good up and young okay. coming bowlers, and I think mm-hmm. he'll be around for a long time. Okay. Just one final question that has been, you know, uh, repeated quite a bit. I see mm. uh, the toughest batsman uh, you've bowled to, the most frustrating batsman you've bowled to. Uh, you uh, bowled to a few yeah. grades in your time. Yeah, I always enjoyed bowling to the guys who are class the best. That to me was the biggest challenge. Uh, you, you know, your Brian Laras, your Sachin Tendulkar's, uh, Raul Dravid, uh, VVS Laxman's on their day, and, and so yeah, any batsman on their day can do well. But day in day out, uh, Brian Lara was probably one of the toughest. Sachin, obviously one of the toughest. And, uh, you know, if I had to have uh, one batsman... If I had to b- have one batsman bat for my life in India, it probably would have been Raul Dravid. Okay. You know, technically, and the way he went about things, uh, he was a, a quality, quality bowler, mm-hmm. but a uh, batsman. But, um, but yeah, no, you can't go past Sachin and Brian. Okay, all right. Yeah. Uh, that is a debate that, you know, that can never be settled. Uh, thanks a lot for all of you uh, uh, who joined in, asked your questions. Uh, we tried and answer most of them. Uh, mm. Glenn was patient enough to answer most of them. Uh, thanks a lot, Glenn, uh, for taking time off from your uh, busy schedule. You're in India for uh, some brand work. You know, great to talk to you in the meantime. Uh, it was wonderful uh, interacting with you, picking your brain on uh, fast bowling. Oh. Hope you keep coming back to India. Yeah, uh, no, it's, uh, India is like a second home. I'm enjoying it here, and as I said, I'm up here promoting. Is there a, is there a Bollywood movie coming? Like uh, no, no, I'll <laughs> leave that to Brett. Uh, but I'm happy just to come here and enjoy it, and uh, enjoy life, enjoy the food, have a nice bottle of wine, and uh, that yeah, sounds lovely. Have fun. Maybe we can have a glass after this thing sounds is good. done.